Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight, and it's Friday, April the 5th, 2013. Here are top stories. Tonight, is America headed to a new police state or just obliviously repeating history? And David Knight sits down with a former prosecutor who wants to legalize marijuana? All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, this is big breaking news. At least it's news to me or anybody that's been watching Obama for the last four years. He says that he is constrained by the system our founders have put into place. Paul Joseph Watson covers a uh, story here. He says, during a speech in Denver, Colorado, President Obama remarked that his gun control agenda was constrained by the system our founders put in place, as he lambasted Second Amendment advocates who argue gun ownership is a means of protection against government tyranny. He said, you hear some of these quotes, I need gun to protect myself from the government. We can't do background checks because the government's going to come and take my guns away. Well, the government is us. These officials are elected by you. They're elected by you. I am elected by you. I am constrained as they are constrained by a system that our founders put in place. It's a government of and by and for the people. Well, as InfoWars has documented and as restates in this article, Obama has flagrantly violated the Constitution in all manner of different ways, from undermining the power of Congress, an act of treason according to Congressman Walter Jones, by insisting his authority came from the United Nations Security Council prior to the attack on Libya, and that congressional approval was not necessary, to accepting rotating status as a chairman of the UN Security Council, which is a direct violation of Article 1, Section 9, Clause 8 of the Constitution. And actually, that's just an abbreviated list, of course. You know, he's been doing secret assassination lists where he denies people due process, even American citizens abroad. He signed the NDAA and said, oh, don't worry, I won't use it. I won't use the new power that I've given myself and other presidents. Well, you know, it was Thomas Jefferson that said, in questions of power, trust no man. He said, let no more be heard of confidence in man, but bind him down from mischief with the chains of the Constitution. Well, that means they have to actually obey the law that they've sworn an oath to. They actually have to pay attention to things like the First Amendment and the Second Amendment and the Sixth Amendment that guarantees our due process. But what Obama has done, as he did last summer with the Immigration Act, when he finds that he can't get support, even amongst his own fellow Democrats, his own political party, what he'll do is an end around the legislation. What he'll do is just sign something into law, as he did the Immigration Act. And now we see Homeland Security, as we showed last week, uh, licenses in North Carolina are saying legal presence for illegal immigrants on the driver's licenses being issued by the state of North Carolina. And that is done under the direction of the Department of Homeland Security, which is implementing Obama's dictatorial orders. We also see that Gun control, in my opinion, is being enacted by non-legislative means. He's going around Congress again, using Homeland Security again to try to buy up ammunition so that we effectively can't use our guns. There's another way to do gun control. Well, if you want to see what government looks like when it's out of control, if you want to see, th think of any dystopian movie, movie that you've seen, 1984, Brazil, uh, even um, uh, Clockwork Orange, something like that. Take a look at this clip. That's about as disgusting as police brutality and a police state get. If you think you can trust people because they work, from the gov work for the government, that they're from the government, therefore they're here to help you, watch that video. Watch it in its entirety. It goes on for a very, very long time. This is worse than the uh, protesters that were being sprayed in the face in California. I think it was Berkeley, some university in California. Uh, where the, the cop, the security guard, just walked along and sprayed them in the face as they were sitting there. This guy is constrained. And this is what happens. This is the article, 1984's Room 101. Video from U.S. prison shows inmate held down and pepper sprayed at close range. 
And from the tape, it says, you're never going to win. The, the uh, guy who's spraying him says, the bottom line is, the House wins every time. That's what Maine Correctional Center Captain Sean Welch said to a prisoner who was strapped into a restraint chair, his face coated with pepper spray, and his legs shaking in pain and fear. And in the video, we see Schlosser immobilized in the restraint chair and surrounded by officers in riot gear. He remains compliant until one of the officers pins Schlosser's head to the back of the chair. He responds by squirming and then spitting at the officer. And without warning, Captain Welch suddenly coats his face at close range with pepper spray from a canister that is only intended to be used on large crowds at a distance of 20 feet or more, according to an investigator's report. Schlosser chokes, fights for breath, pleads, I can't breathe. That's what you just heard in the clip. I can't breathe, Captain. But Welch does nothing. Instead of following accepted professional standards and rinsing away the liquid, he puts a spit hood on Schlosser and effectively traps a pepper spray against his face for over 20 minutes and refuses to let him wash the burning spray from his face and eyes. Now, unfortunately, what happens is there's no discipline for this officer. As it says in the article, the Maine Department of Corrections has closed ranks to protect this officer. And now what they have done instead of, of prosecuting him or getting him out of the force, what they have said is they need to find out how to keep videos like this from leaking to the public. That's the response. Let's just don't let this kind of stuff get out anymore. You know, there are good cops and there are good uh, prosecutors. And we're going to be talking to one later in the show, Jim Girak from Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. We need to have honest officers and cops. And there was some honest officer or cop in that prison who leaked that video. There was some whistleblower who leaked that. That guy ought to get a medal. Instead, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. He may not just get fired. Those are the kind of guys that might kill him. They might beat him up. They might uh, arrange for him to have an accident. That's the kind of guys those are. And, you know, just because you put on a uniform, that doesn't make you morally uh, uh, superior to other people. If you're a bad guy and you put on a uniform, you just get worse. So we need to have some uh, good officers who are going to stand up like the whistleblower who released that. So when we see things like this, we have to ask ourselves, are we falling into the same kind of tyranny that we've seen over and over again throughout history? Well, Alex Jones takes a deeper look at this very question. I want you to listen to me very, very carefully because we are all in grave danger. A dire warning for every man, woman, and child, not just in the U.S., but worldwide. I have studied the 20th century, and I've studied tyrannies that came before it. And the exact pattern followed in Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, Communist China, the list goes on and on. The exact pattern that was followed in those nations is now being established here. Do you think in Nazi Germany, in the first six, seven years of the Nazis, that it was in the news that oppressive bad things were happening or that people were disappearing? No. Do you think from the time that Lenin was in power and decades later Joseph Stalin, do you think it was in the Russian news that the government was being oppressive and sending people to gulags and taking their children for minor offenses? No. The state-controlled and state-run media was promoting it as a good thing. Now, we've talked a lot about how millions of veterans are getting letters saying you have to turn your firearms in. No judge, no jury, no psychological evaluation, no nothing, turn your guns in. Others are being raided without warrants, their guns are being confiscated, they're being put in psychiatric facilities and are being billed for it, and then being told you won't be released unless you sign papers agreeing that you're mentally ill. I've interviewed them, you've seen it in your local news, it is a purge that's happening. The hospital, my, my primary care physician called to have a wellness check. Uh... Uh, placed on me and the local police perform a wellness check. Well, the local police came up and there was nothing wrong with me. I had no, um, you know, there was no anxiety. I wasn't uh, combative. Uh, I basically, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't with anybody, so I had no witnesses. And they didn't have a warrant. And they, uh, in, with, through intimidation, forcefully uh, commandeered my vehicle and entered my home searched and seized my weapons, 
and um, then you know carted me away in an ambulance to uh, a, a psychiatric evaluation, which I was held for 72 hours. And Homeland Security says veterans, returning veterans, are the number one terror threat when statistically they have one of the lowest crime rates. This is a group being demonized. You've seen where Illinois has tried to put people in jail for life for filming or taping police in public, something completely protected under the First Amendment. 75 years behind bars, a prison sentence that long is rarely handed down, and it's usually just for murderers or rapists. But a local man faces 75 years in prison for a nonviolent crime. What he's accused of doing is something many people have done, but most don't realize it's actually illegal. It's a felony if you're taping. You guys are public. You're recording. A dozen states are using eavesdropping and wiretapping laws to arrest people who record audio of law enforcement without their permission. I'm not shutting it off. Officer, well, are you going to jail? And now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a new case where a family reportedly went to a anti-government rally and so the police raided them over it and found marijuana and so because they allegedly had marijuana with their children their children were taken by the government now the family got their children back at gunpoint allegedly and have fled and the CNN headline doesn't even say it's the parents they just say that anti-government people have taken children from a home and there's a amber alert these signs are up right now an amber alert has been issued by the florida department of law enforcement police believe chase and cole haken are with their parents joshua and sharon haken who police are calling armed and dangerous then they talked to the neighbors uh, in the local newspaper there in florida and they said they were such a nice family such sweet people we don't know what happened to them well they have the normal mammal instinct to protect their children the boys were taken from their grandmother's house in Lake Magdalene. That is in Hillsborough County. According to investigators, the couple lost custody of the two boys after an anti-government rally in Louisiana. Right now, this family is, quote, on the run, but there's a, another chapter to all of this. They are waiting for a judge to sign off on a search warrant uh, before going inside. Once they do, and hopefully soon, they're going to be finding some clues, they hope, about where Haken and, more importantly, his children, where they might be. The local newscasts go and show an Infowars.com bumper sticker when they talk about anti-government to, to try to associate people that realize we have an occupational government with collaborators running it of foreign banks that have taken over. Trying to associate those of us that are real Americans and are aware of what's happening with terrorism or kidnapping children. Anti-government people steal kids, kidnap kids out of home, don't say it's their parents. By the way, these parents are both engineers with no criminal records in an upper middle class area. Police across the state searching for two young boys. Officials issued an Amber Alert yesterday. They believe the children were kidnapped by their own father. The police were targeting people that went to a Tea Party rally, this is all on record, and supposedly found them a marijuana. Ladies and gentlemen, they're going to take your children. Think of the ultimate crime of that from good families over marijuana. We're also learning some new details about the family. The father, Joshua Haken, was arrested a year ago in Louisiana on drug charges. Amber Alert search continues for two boys abducted from grandmother's home by anti-government parents. And the headline shouldn't be anti-government people grab kids out of home. It should be authoritarian government kidnaps children over petty pot charge and parents fight back. This is how they're going to disappear everybody from marijuana or being anti-government or filming police in public. This is how tyrannies work. In the first phases, they just start arresting people and throwing the book at them because they love liberty. Later then, they start arresting people in mass, but only after they have their national ID cards and their cashless society. And that's what's now going into place. Homeland Security is the foreign 
army. It is the fifth branch of the U.S. military under foreign globalist control, openly saying veterans, conservatives, libertarians, gun owners, Tea Party people in the fetters are terrorists. Well, you know what? We're not terrorists. The globalists are the ones funding al-Qaeda worldwide in Libya and Syria. They're the ones using al-Qaeda to menace us, to then set up a police state and take our rights. And they're now claiming, don't worry about al-Qaeda, worry about the American people. You're seeing an authoritarian criminal takeover. They're going to push us and push us and push us until we stand up against them and then they're going to call us terrorists. And then they're going to blow up federal buildings and say we did it to try to get the general public in a cowardly fashion to go along with it. And I want to tell the cowardly public something. Giving into this tyranny ensures they're going to take all your private pension funds, your public pension funds, and your bank accounts. That's now all being announced. And so go ahead and serve it. You're going to bring in our destruction. Your cowardice, your sheep-like behavior invited every wolf on the planet to come here to feed on the joke that America's turned into. I want America to pull up, to stop trusting government, and to get in the face of these bureaucrats, and to take action against them politically before it turns into a physical shooting war. And if you don't like that, you're not an American, because that's what this country was founded on. Now back to InfoWars and Nightly News. That leads us to our quote of the day. It's from Ronald Reagan, and he says, From time to time, we've been tempted to believe that society has become too complex to be managed by self-rule, that government by an elite group is superior to government for, by, and of the people. But if no one among us is capable of governing himself, then who among us has the capacity to govern someone else? Well, that really is kind of a... Uh, a repeat of something that uh, James Madison said. Reagan kind of rephrased it in more contemporary language. James Madison, one of the founders, said, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. But if angels were to govern men, neither external nor internal controls of government would be necessary. In other words, yes, we're not angels, but neither are the people that we put in government. So we have to watch them. As Jefferson said, we have to bind them with the chains of the Constitution, and we have to keep them ultimately accountable with an armed citizenry. That goes back to the first thing we we're talking about tonight. You know, I like Ronald Reagan, but you got to remember that Ronald Reagan threw the Second Amendment under the bus with the Brady Bill because he had a friend who was hurt and he wanted to uh, help him in some way. He also, uh, we're also living with his legacy of the drug war, of zero tolerance, of mandatory minimums. We saw things like uh, giant budget deficits for the time that we're still living with, precedents that were set, deals that were struck, things that made Ron Paul, who was the earliest supporter of Ronald Reagan, resign in disgust in 1986. So um, I like what Ronald Reagan says, but we have to, as he would say, trust and verify. We have to look at what he actually did, and that's the way history should judge us. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com, the clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro Filtered Sports Bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go back favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest shower filter system, and the Aquapod kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com, and don't forget it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter.